Welcome to the Chelsea Fancast. I am Stafford Chidge. And of course, we are powered by celery and fueled by Guinness. And in my case, idiocy for not pressing the button. But there you go. You live and learn. Uh, the title of tonight's show is Magpie Stew. Chelsea Fancast number 1118. And I'm joined as ever by the delicious Jonathan oh. Kidd. Oh, not delightful or delovely, Chidge. But no, just that, was the, that was the bit that nobody will ever hear, ever. Yeah. It has been consigned to the yes. ether between all of us. Yes. yes. And I said I felt that the uh, the dish that we were given yesterday was um, was not as much stew as a kind of um, uh, bizarre uh, hors d'oeuvre that uh, after a, an, an early goal and then a strange um, uh, a strange moment where the waiter took it back from us and then gave it to us again and then attempted to take it back at the end of the game uh, using a rather banal metaphor that you that's why that's why i called it stew because it was a bit of a we we ate the magpies but it was a bit had a bit of everything in it last night didn't it well a bit of of, of inept, usual ineptitude that we bit of that old night. boot yeah a bit know? of old a yeah, bit of old old well except there's nobody old on the pitch is there for us anymore so you can't say that it's uh there's any oldie involved in it, but yes, it was it was the usual um, the usual fare. I think one could say. Well, no, apart could... from the fact that we won, maybe we might well, talk there, about there that. that. I forgot about that. Yes, I'm sorry. I must be more yeah. optimistic and happy. Yes, we won. Ha 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 ha! May I introduce our guest? Please Does do. Everybody at home, presume you can't see who it is, even though his name is there, because he is, of course, as we've established, obviously, some time ago in the past, he is, of course, the. Um, uh, um, the goalkeeper's friend and the housewife's choice. Woo, 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 woo! Do, 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 do. It's not that, is it? Oh, you've got a... Oh, okay. Enough of that, thank you. Lovely, lovely. So we, Finally, he has the music. All the time here. Singing the wrong tune, Clayton, for you. No, so that's it. Da, 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 that's the one. Hello. 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 We've had the wrong music for you. We've been humming the wrong tune all this time, Clay. He's only figured this out a couple of weeks ago. Because it was. Da, 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 yeah. What's that? What's that then? Something different. I'll have to work it out. I have no idea. How are you, mate? I. Clay, Clay, Clay. Yes, 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 it was, yes, it was yes. Lovely, lovely to see you yesterday. I saw you. Uh, we went to the um, uh, what's it? What do they call it? Founders Day, they, don't they? They call it Founders Day. Yes. And uh, we laid a wreath at the Mears uh, grave. Well, I say we. I was late. By the time I turned up, all the directors, as in who, who turned up? Danny Finkelstein, Barbara Sharon. <laughs> yes. And um Jason, somebody, Gannon. Uh oh god, what was his name? He's a fi he's a uh, a finance person, isn't he? Yeah, uh, yeah. and um Tom Roddy was there as well. Yeah. And basically they were there for five minutes. Yeah, and they uh, made a the big the big boss man was in the house yesterday, so I he suspect was. they were all on a very short leash and summoned back um to decide our fate next year not pochettino's our season ticket fate yeah um but yeah no it was great it was um and then the the, the club historian the wonderful rick glanville uh gave us a tour of um the graves and some uh ex-players mostly ex-directors and a lot of people who were responsible for this fan cast really aren't they uh when they formed our great club all those years ago so it was yeah. really interesting it was very very good and i had no idea that emmeline pankhurst is actually buried in west Brompton. oh Island. did you not know that i did not know that i knew that i knew that but I've, I've done the tour before so you know well there you go so now you know it was a good tour he, rick rick's brilliant at that and uh i don't know i mean he does do them occasionally so if you ever get the chance to it's fascinating you learn a bit every time so there we go yeah. it's lovely to see clayton beforehand we went down to the stall Saw the chaps, uh, which is all very nice, and uh, uh, and then went towards the pub, uh, where I saw uh, a Mister Tony Glover, uh, and uh, and I believe uh, I, I poured a Guinness down his throat, and then he said, "I'm sorry, Chidge," 
I have to leave. I have an appointment with Lord Kidd and Roast Swan. Tony was in, I, I said the, the posh seats, but actually the potch seats would be appropriate because you have a very good view of potch, don't you, from where we do. He said he's got a very different perspective on the match and he quite understood why I came up with the odd uh, gem of noticing what was going on on the pitch because he, uh, he enjoyed the perspective very much. Um, uh, he was in very good form, was Tony, and uh, um, made himself uh, uh, very, very well liked by all the people I sit with who thought he was um, uh, Eddie and Gary and uh, Frenchman Philippe, thought he was a uh, mine of excellent information. And he, he, he did do that slightly um, difficult thing of standing up um, whenever something of, uh, interested him on the pitch, which... Uh, um, Old habits die hard for us who sit do. in the cheap seats, mate. They do, they do. So not that I had to pull him down, but um, I think... He, did anybody he, notice that he'd actually stood up? Yeah, the man behind him pushed him down. But I mean, yeah. you, you don't really notice when Tony stands up, to be fair. Oh, that's cruel. That's cruel. Harsh. But, uh, very harsh. harsh. Uh, harsh back. <laughs> he, had got, he had got up... Um, he was getting up quite regularly. On one occasion, he got up, and the man, as I say, the who we'd met before, it was Philippe, the French guy, sits behind me, just pushed him down, and he apologised profusely. Um, and on one occasion, realised that he'd used a swear word and said, uh, "I do apologise about that." But, um, um, he still not, nobody nobody has yet to outdo my bad behaviour on the first time I went with you, have they? No, but he was warned not to use the uh, the Gareth word. He was warned. So. I, I, I know. Uh, he was set up for that but yeah no he he loved it and he he, he you know he, as being tony he, he was he made good friends he was terrific yeah, he's, he is he is one of life's lovely people the the pleasure yeah. i had in his company the weekend before that at the portsmouth naval dockyard thing was superb anyway you lot out there uh we do have a show to do and as ever uh, as ever a little as ever don't forget you can you can now watch it's like watch with mother whose mother that's a good question for you all. Answers on a postcard, please. Uh, but you can watch us on YouTube live. Live, live, can, live, live. And you can watch us on Facebook, our Facebook Facebook page, live. Live. So there you go. But, uh, of course, you can always, always listen to us on Mixler as well, which is the kind of internet radio streaming ting. Uh, and you'll find that at chelsea-fancast.mixlr, M-I-X-L-R.com. Uh, usually every Monday and Friday, usually at half seven, seven or half, actually never at seven, half seven, but tonight half eight because it's Tuesday. And uh, thanks to the Premier League making our match on a Monday night, I work from 8.30 to 8 p.m. on a Tuesday. There is not a worse day for me to do a podcast, but here I am because I love you all. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah, so Mixler, YouTube, Facebook, all live. And of course, you can follow us on all the socials at Chelsea Fancast. And uh, we do upload this as a podcast soon afterwards. And, of course, that's on ACAR, Spotify, Apple, all good podcast platforms. Make sure you leave us a lovely five-star review. Listen, like, and subscribe. And uh, if you love us hugely, then you can also join our Patreon uh, website, Thingy Bob What's It, which basically means you bung us a few quid every month. And I say thank you. And that's about it. But also, you join lots of, a lot of other, lot of lovely people. All the people on Mixler, for example, that tend to be in uh, in the Patreon account. Of course, they're all on Discord, on our Discord group. And, of course, if you join Patreon, you get to join our Discord group. I will send you a link if you ask. And, of course, the other thing is you get a Kerry Dixon banner, which is a lovely thing, a replica of the one that hangs in the Matthew Harding end. Patreon.com forward slash Chelsea Fancast if you are so disposed to do. Um, so there we go. JK, um, what was lovely was to see us get and because I sat at the kind of like we do at the moment, we're we're a bit like we're a bit like uh, you know people who have been jilted by their very sexy girlfriend who's come back apologetically, and you kind of think, well, I don't quite trust you yet. So you kind of sit there, kind of, hmm, yeah. what's going to happen tonight? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. But time. actually, they yeah, but they got a really early goal, which I I was convinced was was Palmer, actually, but apparently they gave it to Jackson, whose stud caught it on the way in. But lovely to see us get an early goal. I mean, what was it? Yeah. Uh, seven minutes, was it? Something like that? Six. Six minutes, yeah. Six minutes. Yeah. So, you know, uh, that that I, I jumped I jumped around. I jumped around, as the song says, and I felt very happy, uh, particularly as I thought it was Palmer who scored it. But it was, it was Jackson. And, you know, we'll talk about Palmer in a minute. 
But, you know, Jackson, as, as, as I've been saying quietly for the last few weeks, I'm beginning, I'm beginning to warm to him. He's now scored more Premier League goals, nine, than Rasmus Hoyland. Callum Wilson, your favourite Callum Wilson. They've got seven each. Kai he's Havertz been, has got he's been seven. Injured a lot. He's been injured. Yeah, a lot. Ev- he's always injured, mate. He's yeah. broken a fingernail again. Evan Ferguson, who's got six. And Mohamed Kudus, who's got six. And Gabriel Jesus, who has four. He scored more goals than all of that lot. Uh, and he does put in a shift. And he does try. I am warming to him, mate. And he scored another goal. Just, I'm not it's... saying he's a world beater. I'm not saying he's the reincarnation of Didier Drogba. I'm just saying first season, he's probably going to get double-figure goals. And to be fair to him, he took the offside goal really well, didn't he? How, how offside was he? Impossible to see from where I was. Yeah, no, I mean, we couldn't. And I mean, well, I don't even know if it was him that was offside, to be honest. No, once again. Of course it was. That's his middle name. Yeah, I'm kind of tempted to believe it was him because he tends to be. But it might have been Sterling. I kind of hope secretly it was. Uh, yeah. No, come on. I mean, he's doing all right. I mean, that, that, and, and oh, it, you know. Yeah. It worked better coming in on the angle from the wing, actually. I don't know what, why, that, why that should be the case. I don't appreciate that. But, that and also, that, and also he, that's normally his position. <laughs> that would help. Wouldn't that would that be why, then? <laughs> that would be one of the reasons why. But the, the other thing he does do when the ball is booted aimlessly up just to to stop us from fiddling about with it on the goal line. Um, uh, he actually got a couple of headers in and beat the centre-half as well, which I thought, well, hey, that's that's we're, we're making more progress. And he got a very good header in to set um, uh, Sterling up for that shot as well, set him up. And he, so he's, he's got... He, it's interesting, he has more of a of a football brain than than Mudrick will, will ever have. Um, and you can see that he, he, he... There's something going on with him. Um, that, that is that is better than than we have seen all season. I, I, you, know, if you want to look like an, an improvement graph. I think he has a, he is actually improving. I think there's something to be said for that. Whereas um, there are other players improve and then they're bad and then they're, it's the inconsistency of the others as well. I mean, if you wanted to go through and say which ones do you think are actually appear right. to be getting better as the season goes, no, you don't. If one wanted to, presuming the, I know. <laughs> Uh, we, we did two. it. We did it on Friday or something. I can't Friday. remember. I know, I know. I'm just setting it up again. But in my instance, I, I looking at the game again, you could see which ones um, went up. Were you know Connor obviously didn't have a great game because he 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 was He's still um, ill, mate. Still ill. Yeah, you could tell. And in the in certain periods, he put him in. I thought he was just occupying positions rather than doing much. He was, well, he was I think there the were board. tactical yeah. reasons why he was doing that. More of that later. But uh, yeah, 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 absolutely. I mean, it's really interesting, wasn't it? Because he started with the four-two-three-one. And then very quickly went to four four two, or as I said to John Gordon, who I had the delight of sitting next to yesterday because uh, he had a spare seat, and there was some very attractive young lady sitting in my seat, and I didn't feel like separating her from her friend, so I kind of took one for the team. And uh, he said, "Mate, they're playing four four two. I said, "No, they're not, John." I said, "They're playing four four fucking two." He said, "Oh yes, of course, of course." Anyway, <laughs> we digress. Um, as I said, Clayton, I thought it was uh, was Palmer. Who who scored our opener? But you know, I was at, at our end. You know, it's hard to see who it is, really, isn't it? Because we, at our age, it's getting quite hard to see. Yeah, but, I, don't, um, I haven't, haven't realised the game has started. I think actually going forward, you know, all this talk of uh, if, if they want to kind of scrap the uh, the pensioners' uh, season tickets, the the concession they should make to us is that they should make sure that Chelsea always kick at our end for both halves, and then we can see better. Because actually, I had a very good view of the absolutely superb goal that Palmer scored to put us two one up. Um, he is fantastic. I, I'm, I'm what a brilliant. I love him. I'm mate. I love him. Great player. He's all right. No, he is good. <laughs> he, he's he's very he's very good. He's um, yeah. Um, can I just go back to um, our friend Jackson? No. I think no. Okay. <laughs> of course you can. You silly um, <laughs> I think that he's much maligned because Oh Jacko. Yeah, because he's basically doing something he wasn't bought to do. He wasn't bought to be our main striker. I think there's something, and I don't mean this in a comparison as a player, but I think there's something quite Kalu about him. I don't know how much Jonathan likes Solomon Kalu. I know, um, he's got the same birthday as me. I love him. But but the fact is that he's 
he's supposed to be in addition to yeah. our main striker. And I think he needs to be lauded for what he's doing and what he's achieving on his own. He's 22. And I think that gets forgotten. You know, his, his goal scoring is amazing considering he was away at the African Nations as well. So there were times yesterday where I was exasperated with him. But I think I, together with others, need to sort of take that into account. Um, the, yeah, I mean, Palmer's just, this goal was amazing. The mm. power, I mean, from where we sit, yeah. the power with which he hit that. I know that certain people said, well, the keeper should have done better. Um, there's no way as a keeper you can expect that that shot there you yes you need to be on your toes at all times but that was just superb and he did loads of other great things and he's just fantastic uh, and i'm getting really really hacked off the potch keeps taking him off yeah it was a big mistake big i mistake. mean i do understand when you want to shore up the game etc um but Again, we ended a game. I know we're going off piste here, but we ended a game without a, a striker on the pitch. We actually have Chukwameka playing up front for the last yeah. few minutes. He's a midfield star. player, not centre forward. Absolutely. And Absolutely. just because just because he's big and tall doesn't mean that he can do a job. But you know, we won, so I'm I'm not going to moan. But I, I I wish that he would not keep taking him off. Yeah, I mean, it makes a difference when he comes off, as of course it would, because he's a very good player. But to be fair, he did take him off on the 86 minutes, so he was he was which, trying to protect. Which normally the means there's 15 minutes to go. Well, yeah. that that therein and, lies and a very and good they point. Scored. They scored with six minutes to go. No, the 90th minute was six minutes of that to go. Actually, did you honestly yeah. sit there thinking, yes, it's going to be three two? I said it to John. I, I said it to John. I mean, I was ecstatic when we went three one up. Yeah. Uh, and, and when did we go three one up? Just have a look here. Seventy six minutes. Yeah. Seventy six minutes. Three one up. And and I said to John, how long we got left? Fourteen minutes plus. Uh, you know, injury time. I said, mate, I, I I still don't feel comfortable with this team, even when they're three one up, which you should be. You should be home and host. And sure enough, uh, you know, Murphy scores that that absolute walloper on on ninety minutes. But. Uh, there you go. He is he is a good player, Palmer. I mean, you know, it's interesting, isn't it? There's that we were. I can't remember who I was talking to. Um, I mean, maybe it was on our WhatsApp group. I can't remember, but anyway, we were we, people were talking, and we were saying who are the who are the really maybe it was John yesterday. You know, who are the who are the good? You know, there are it, it it's in what has been a to say the least bizarre season. There have been some some good buys. Petrovic is one of them. Palmer is without doubt another one. But uh, this lad, uh, Gusto, is also uh, another one, Jonathan. I'm I'm liking him a lot too. I thought he was he was he's becoming a top top player. I think. Yeah, he had another good game, other than his bizarre aberration for their goal, uh, their first goal. Well, when he, uh, he him, to... Enzo, yeah. Chaloba, yeah. Caicedo, absolute yeah. fucking Horlicks. Yes, yes, it was bizarre, wasn't but it? But he was yeah. good yesterday on the whole. I mean. No, he's, I, you know, I, I, no, I agree. Other than that one moment, he's he's um, uh, he's he's a he's a player that you would think, yeah, he's. Well, once again, he's improved. Yeah, you know, we 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 we've been getting an opportunity to play. You wonder whether it's people keep saying, even we're seeing a lot of here on the private chat was just saying, you know, give give uh, give people an opportunity to play. You wonder would would Mudrick? We we you know we've written Mudrick off this season. We've actually thought this is absurd. He just isn't capable of dealing and with anything. Yet. And yet he then comes up with, with that. And he, since he's moved him into the middle, he seems to contribute more. He seems to have a, a, a raison d'etre in a way that we haven't seen from him before. So it's, it's, but the thing is, it, it, it's this consistency, isn't it? Because he's just likely to come on as a substitute in another game and contribute nothing. But you wonder, therefore, should he start? But then how does he start? Where do you play him when he starts, given that, uh, um, uh, you know, we, the, well, I think, I think in that. Available, you know, you, you don't play him in mid midfield because you're going to play Connor, Caicedo, and, and Enzo. That they're, they're, they're all. He does look good in that number ten role. He does. He, he looks good in that. He, he look. I mean, the interesting thing about that Clayton is that he looks like he knows what he's doing there. 
which is peculiar, isn't it? When you think he's supposed to be a winger, but when he's in a winger, his positioning is appalling. But I mean, that that was it was a brilliant goal. I mean, obviously, great skill, got round the keeper, didn't fuck it up. Great skill to beat the players in the box. But what I like most about it was the late run, you know, which we don't see enough of from this team. And and I think that's that's classic number ten play. It was brilliant. You know, it, it's before he actually did that. Um, can I just read you something? Of this won't take long. The rip it up strategy has meant that we are now a very young team. So if a certain player is struggling, there's nowhere to hide. This means the strong will survive and more of the uh, the latter will weak will flounder. It also means there may be some gems in there who may be lost and we have another De Bruyne or Salah situation. I think that one of those players could be Mikhaila Mudrik. The guy currently just looks lost, but I can't get his debut out of my mind. He came on at half-time at Anfield. He looked electric, should have scored and terrified the opposition. I know that we haven't seen much close to that performance since, but there has to be a player in there. I'm always thinking how much better teams he would be slotting into one of the Premier League winning teams. He would have had all the support he needed and any mistakes could have been absorbed. That was by a very world-famous author writing in this fine publication. And that's what I think about Mudrick. I just, I just think that there is a player in there. And when you, you wrote, see, did you, did you write that? Yes, for CFC and UK. This month, uh, I, I haven't read any of them yet, even, even mine. <laughs> uh, the ones that we picked up last night. Oh right, right. Well, I didn't have a chance. And to read so them. I just thought that when you see him do what he did last night, you cannot deny that there's a player in there. Now, before he did that, I turned around to my mate and I basically said. We got 10 games to go in the league. We're not going to do anything. Stick him in. Last 10 games, just stick him in and let him get on with it. Let him make his mistakes. But, I mean, that that's what I feel. And where you say, where do you play him? If we've got a front three playing, and I just, for an example, if he took the place of a certain other winger, um, whose name I'm not going to mention, and just, OK, you've got a front three, let him drift, let him do what he likes and see how much more havoc he can actually cause. I just think I, we've got nothing to lose whatsoever. It's a conundrum, isn't it? I mean, I, I, I agree with everything that you said. I, I agree with everything that JK said. Um, there is, I mean, you know, I even wrote it in the notes. I said you know, Mudrick, maybe there is a footballer there after all, JK. I mean, if he's capable of doing that, that's, I mean, maybe we've said this before. Maybe it's as simple as the fact that he is an instinct player. And if he has to think about it, he will fuck it up. If he doesn't have time to think about it, he has moments of, I mean, that was, I wouldn't say it's quite genius, but it was, it was very, very good, JK. When you think about it, the last two goals you scored have both been really excellent, haven't they? Um, yeah. He got the goal the other day against... Who Both of which he didn't have to think about. No, well, to an extent, you had to think about you know, selling the dummy to the goalkeeper, taking it yeah. around and then yeah. hitting it in. So, um, But um, uh, what, what do you do as a manager of seeing that? Do you then say, right, well, let's 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 do, you, as you say, Clayton, let's let's have him... Let's have him... I mean, I, would, I wouldn't play Sterling again for the rest of the season, personally. I think he's... Uh, um, he's he's had too many opportunities, and uh, um, even when he gets into position, he tried a bit harder yesterday, and um, but was was found wanting again. You know, you just well, think. Well, where, where was the trying <coughs> protecting his fullback? He didn't. No, he didn't do any of that. No, he doesn't do that. I just meant in terms of he didn't run into many yeah. blind. blind are we actors. talking about? Are we talking about my favourite player here? We're talking All about Gillette, who we we uh, when we were talking about who the, what team would be picked, we admitted that he would have to play given the. Um, um, the, well, the I certain... didn't. I didn't pick him. No, that's true. That's true. But we, but we did accept that. We, we accept it was very likely, didn't we, at yeah. the time? We thought that he's got. Time. I mean, why bother? I mean, he he fuck he does. I mean, again, he caused me to stand up and shout obscenities into the the va you know the vacuum of Stamford Bridge again last night. You know, he 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 doesn't. He either has no awareness or he doesn't give a shit. He's out of position. He doesn't track back. 
He's not aware of what's going on. He he. I mean that he should have scored. Of he course. should have scored. That would I have mean, been the game. That would have been three one uh, with yeah. half an hour to go. That that was the game. Yeah, and it, it, he fucked it up. I mean, what is his? What is the point? What is the point? Christ on a bike. They have got to sell him in the summer. They need him out of that club. Three hundred and fifty grand a week for that pile of shit. Fuck off. <laughs> I've had enough, mate. Lovely human being stinks the place out as a footballer at our club. Seriously, it's fine commercials. I mean, he is. A, this is the, the tragedy of it, you know. I mean, we bought this player with a huge reputation, proven track record, winning mentality. He's he is a, he is a fantastic human being. The things he does off the pitch, you know, are. I mean. It's, 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 you know, it's the kind of player you want at a football club to take you forward in that kind of an area, you know, like the foundational areas. You know, the work he does with charity, underprivileged, the think of the background he came from and what he's achieved, the way he stuck it to the right wing press. I mean, absolutely fantastic. I mean, he could be, you know, he's almost captain material with that. And then you see him on the pitch putting in stinkers like that. I, I cannot, this is why I'm so angry about it, because I cannot work it out. I we wanted have- him to do so well. Yeah, no, we, we had a conversation before the game, um, and one of the people I was with, basically, I, I said, "Look, I've I've just got this irrational dislike of the guy because of what he produces on the pitch," and they're saying he's our best player, you know, and he could be if he played. He should like, be. He should be. Are they, are they I, I, my my biggest problem with him is that that is a team of kids out there. He's one of very, very few experienced players that we've got, and I never see him lead on the pitch. I never, ever see him go to other players. I know, Listen, I'm sure in the dressing room he's a leader in his own way, but I can't see... I can't see it on the pitch, and, and, and we desperately need that. Yeah. We desperately, desperately need... Somebody to calm everybody down. Yeah, go on, John. Okay, JK. No, no, no. I can't say I agree with you completely. I was going to say he should. I'm just going to chip in and say he needs to be an example. Yeah. Sorry, my. I do apologise. My hand was was. He leads with his no, hand. No, but, like... but, but you're right. He he basically he has got all the experience. He's been there, done that, bought the t-shirt. He should be able to help those kids because yesterday, like so many times this season, we go one up. And then what do we do? Nothing. We did absolutely nothing. We should have been going for a second goal. You know, when we're panicking, when something things are going wrong, where is that player? We know that our wonderful owners sold everybody that could be that player. And that's fine. There were reasons for doing that. As long as you're bringing somebody in to replace them, which we didn't do. And that is my bugbear with Sterling. Sterling should be that player. Mm, no, I totally agree. Um, I was a bit disheartened when the team sheet came out. One should never do this, but it's very hard not to to see Cucurella starting because because I didn't pick him on uh, Friday, although JK said, oh, we will. So well played, JK. Um, to be fair to the poodle, I thought, you know, he actually had a pretty decent game bar two goals, which is what <laughs> you get from him, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. He, he was a snarling... Uh representative of the mafia for a period wasn't he he was like a um uh i said of the fan but he was a he was a rabid dachshund he he was um he was very keen on getting making those tackles and i think that was why he gave the ball away for the for their second goal because he tried to anticipate it by going really quickly up on the uh, uh on murphy who then spun him um but yeah. he'd been doing that he did that with gordon and in fact he kicked gordon on several occasions, I'm afraid. I think it aggravated his knee injury. That's why he went off. And he he, he and Livramento also had a scrap as well. They were the ball was going down down that side all the time, and he was constantly getting involved in scuffling with him. And I, you know, he, he we, we didn't you know we're not getting much creativity from him. But you got a you got somebody who he put some um, good passes he, together actually. He, to be the fair. Old one or two, but well, he mm-hmm. but he put himself about. But yeah. I get the impression once again we're dealing with somebody who is. He's exhibiting um, an oomph of the form that he showed at, at Brighton. But to be fair, that's his first game since December. Well, so, you so know. he was going to tire. 
inevitably yeah, yeah. yeah. And of course, that's when we conceded. But you know, that's when Murphy spanned him. He would have been pretty knackered by then, to be fair. Yeah. But I was—I mean, it's quite funny actually, because uh, I, I was—I thought he had a really good sixty minutes, and I said so. And the blokes looked in front of me and, and looked at me and said, "Are you sure?" And I said, <laughs> "I said," and I, and I said, "I said I've gone too soon, haven't I? I've gone yeah. too soon on the Curricorellas being good." <laughs> and then five minutes later, he got spun by Murphy. But that was a good, good, good bit of humour kicking around, actually. I mean, I think people were generally a lot happier last night. And I thought the atmosphere was was a lot better. I mean, it was, you know, I think we needed that. I think everybody needed that. The players needed it. We needed it. Poch needed it. Much better. Now, listen, I've got, a, I've got a, a, an issue to discuss with you two. You're going to love this. <laughs> I know. Um, we have been scoring goals. Something we were incapable of doing completely, and now we were le- now we're leaking goals, and and I I mean obviously one of the reasons why this is I think is you know I think maybe we've been trying to attack more, which of course as always leaves the door open, maybe missing Silver's wise head, but there's some fantastic I say fantastic I'm getting too excited by stats in my old age this needs to stop it needs to stop now, uh, anyway in the first thirteen games of this season Chelsea scored eighteen under one point five per game and conceded 12 under one per game. In the 25 since, they've both scored and conceded 51 goals. That's over two every game. Uh, This is from Spy, and he says, is the need for a goal scorer now greater than the need... uh, I think what he meant, I've written this wrong. Uh, Is the need for a defensive leader uh, improvement greater than the need for a goal scorer? Uh, I think this might have been Tim. Tim Watt wrote this, Tim Rolls. Interesting that a supposed Chelsea weakness is up front, yet they've scored 18 in the last nine games. The defence, on the other hand, has conceded 18 in those nine games, a lot of which would have been utterly avoidable. Tim's, I love Tim. Tim's Tim's wrath at the moment, uh, Clayton, is hilarious, isn't it? Particularly reading his CFC UK stuff. Um, right, we're on pace. This is amazing. We're on pace for our worst defensive season since 19, uh, 1993, I think. And this is from The Athletic. And on goals scored, we should be based on projection six in the league. So suddenly we're scoring goals, Clayton, uh, doing quite well up front, which was we, we were, I mean, beyond struggling with. And now we can't keep a clean sheet. What's going on? OK, so, yes, um, I do think we miss Silva. Uh, you look at the defence and every game you've got a different defence. So that's reason number one. Um, although I thought he had an excellent game last night, um, we I'm talking about Caicedo. Uh, the midfield needs to be slightly more protective. But, OK, it doesn't matter who you've got in your defence. The first goal that we conceded last night was an utter, utter shambles. It was just ridiculous. It was just one crap pass after the other. And you could see what was happening. You just could see what was happening. But I suppose the bottom line is if we score more than we let in, we're going to win games. And I think that it it was quite interesting. And, you know, this this whole sort of... uh, the crowd baying every time we tried to play it out from the back and Newcastle yes. pressing yes. and everybody cheering when they went long. Kick it long. It really, really, really funny. Um, listen, I, I don't I don't know. One of one of my criticisms of, of Poch is the fact that he's been there two thirds of a season and we still don't look particularly organized. So whether he or another member of the coaching staff are coaching the defense i got no idea but but i think the bottom line is that you're changing your defense every single week and you can't get consistency you can't get partnerships and that's why you're going to let in goals mm. and i don't that- actually think that um anything's down to the keeper i don't i don't don't think you had a chance with with either a no, certainly the second that. one <laughs> They were both very. They were both very good goals. To be fair, they I, mean, I, know, were, I know, know we had a lot to do with the build-up for both of them, but they were yeah. really well finished. Yeah. Sorry, sorry, Clayton, I interrupted you. Sorry. No, no, no. I was saying that the but both goals were were gifted to them. They didn't earn them. 
No, but they put them away well. Yeah, also, Desazi didn't close down um, Isaac at all for the first goal. He just stood off him. And and it's absolutely fatal with the, with the striker like that who can bend it round. You're and he never going to fall in love again. He he he, uh, he, he used it. He, I'm sorry, it was, it was a Chris Isaac. That's right. That's Chris. I, I was saying Isaac though, Chidge. So I did the, I did that gag on Friday anyway. On Friday as well, yeah. yeah. And I and I, and I did. Um, I don't want to fall in love. That's what I just did with you. I know. I know. I'm just repeating it for anybody who was. It was know, bad enough when I repeated it. I, was I, bad I, I felt, I, I felt uh, immediately I wanted to dive into a big hole the minute I said that. I said, okay. I wish okay. I hadn't said that. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. I'm slightly wrong key. Otherwise, I'd have given you the full rendition there. Actually, <laughs> that way. Um, uh, yeah, but that was the whole of that sequence was just absolutely appalling, wasn't it? You just knew all of us around where we were just going, no, I mean, I want to go for fuck's sake, but I tend not to where I sit. Just go for fuck's sake, for fuck's sake, for fuck's sake. We just went, no, 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 no. And you just knew on the, yeah. the crescendo of the fifth that there would be a shot on goal. You just knew it. You knew with a possible result of it being a goal. And it started with that enormous attempted pass from Enzo from, the right hand corner, the left hand corner across field that one of their players got to but didn't control it. And then, um, uh, um, and then, uh, um, Mallow kicked the ball up in the air, looking as if he was trying to actually kick it over the Newcastle player to control it to get, but why backwards? And you just, oh God. And then, um, Trevor came out and headed it meaninglessly out of getting out of position as a consequence. He ran out of position to head it straight to their bloke who passed it, who passed it off to uh, Isaac. Goal. You just think that, ah, what on earth? It was just so inept. Yeah. All of a that. A litany, so... of, a litany of ineptness. Very much like this show, to be honest, JK, I think. <laughs> this show is shambolic. <clears throat> no, no, I think it was shambolic on Friday. I think inept. Is tonight. tonight. Oh, okay. All right. A all litany right. of ineptness, I think. Uh, anyway, luckily, what? Huge, really. Ineptitude, what? surely. A litany of ineptitude. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. I'm I'm doing a Simon Jordan, aren't I? Making up words. Can't have that. Ineptness. That's good. It's ineptness. I just, my, my favorite my favorite Simon Jordan made up word is com, 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 competitivity. Competitivity, yeah. 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 We, we know what it means. Competitiveness. Though, he means competitiveness. Competitivity. Yeah. Competitivity. Fucking yeah. Yeah. Uh, anyway, um, you, I mean, luckily for you lot out there, there's going to be a break from this uh, litany of ineptitude, uh, and uh, then we will be back for part two. We will see you very shortly. Welcome back. I'm Stanford Chidge. This is the Chelsea Fancast Magpie Stew. Chelsea Fancast 1118. And uh, I'm joined by JK. Hello. And Mr. Clayton Beerman. Good evening. And just to prove that this is a, a litany of ineptitude, I played the wrong sting at the break. So there you go. Um, we're nothing if not consistent, unlike our football team. Um, now, uh, where do we leave it all? I mean, we were kind of we've kind of done we were better. I thought we were actually the better team, you know, to be fair. I thought, I thought we were good value for the three one. I think, you know, if they'd have got a result out of that, it'd have been very unfair. And it's really good to see that they've turned completely shite Clayton actually. Yeah. Yeah. No, I thought they were rubbish. I yeah. mean, that, 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 that's what was so frustrating when they scored their second goal. You thought, Oh my God, we can't, you know, if they draw, they, do, they don't deserve it. I mean, basically Isaac scored with their, with their, only shot of the first half uh and apart from one shot at the beginning of the second half the their second goal was a, their only other shot i mean they did nothing they created nothing they are they're a lump of a team i mean they they i don't know where they've gone but i i don't know if you saw uh sad enough um but looking at the stats of their results with pope in goal um as opposed to Dubravnik is just extraordinary. Now, I, mean, I it, it it can't be down to that. I mean, I, I don't know how many uh, defenders are potentially missing, but they were. Um, I thought they were really, really poor. What I also thought was very funny, and I don't know what people think about Livramento at the club, 
but he got kicked to shit last night. Yeah, he did. Absolutely. I mean, if <laughs> if it wasn't Cucurella, it was it was somebody else. And the fact the referee didn't book anybody, I I mean, he did eventually, but he let a lot go. I mean, Indeed. I did actually feel sorry for Liveramento. Not very, but um, it's a terrible moment, Clayton, where he looked. He pleaded with the linesman to yeah. have. Given yeah, yeah. Carrera had clearly kicked him yeah, up in the yeah, air. Yeah. And you oh, thought, I, need to, I need to ask you because you would have had a good view at this. The yeah. only time, apart from when we scored, that I got out of my seat when I was really hacked off was when Caicedo got booked. Yeah, but what happened was was there was a foul earlier on. Yeah, and the referee played on. Yeah, and and then then there was that supposed foul, and it wasn't it wasn't a yellow card. You may have been able to say it was a foul, but he. He, he played the ball, I thought. We all thought he played the ball. Well, you're closer to me from what I did, what yeah. have you. But it was quite interesting because Poch, who's really quite mild-mannered throughout, got oh, really lost. angry about that, didn't yeah. he? Yeah, really he, I think it was yeah. his eighth eighth um, yellow card, his eighth booking. And it, well, it wasn't a yellow card. I think I have to say there were a couple of other challenges he did earlier that you probably could have given Which were worse. Yeah, yeah, we could have given a yellow card for. And is but it I, the I, end, I of, end of this month that all the bookings get... Scrapped, yeah, yeah, scrapped, yeah. So he's yeah. just on, he's teetering on the edge. But I felt it was that ref's thing of, I should have given a foul earlier, and I've now given the foul here, and yeah. I'm sort of, I'm overcompensating. I'll book him yeah. as well, whether I'm booking him because perhaps I should have booked him earlier. Um, it was one of those. I just, I, you know, it didn't seem to have any logic to it at all. It didn't look like a foul. He played the ball, no. and and it was, I think he was making up for the fact that he, I don't know why he couldn't just have blown his whistle and. And gone back to where the original foul was. It still is in the laws yeah. for that, you know. I don't, yeah. you know. But he, you know, he, he, as you say, yeah. Well, it wasn't a, it wasn't a bookable offence, and I'm not even convinced it was a foul. But yes, no, no we were, we were, similar, we were all up that. in arms. We were all in the same yeah. way. Yeah. We all, we, I think, I think Tony was the first up with, uh, you know, a lot of, uh, of uh, interesting remarks. Whereas I was more in my, you know, oi, oh, ref, oi, you know, knowing that you can't really swear in the. Uh, uh, in, in, in Swan City. You know, there was no Swan, by the way. Very disappointing. No Swan. Um, Swan was off the menu. Venison. venison talking pie. about uh, unnecessary bookings, as as you were, um, it was interesting to see Chuck Wameka come on, albeit very late on, because, of course, and actually, more to the point, uh, I actually got to have a much better look at Cassidy. Uh, I have to say, I think he looks quite a good player. I quite he's very, like the look very of him. slick, isn't he? He's very, uh, yeah, played some very, very decent um, uh, pinpoint passes just in front and backwards. Yeah, and I, he's I'm, big. I, he's quite a unit. I didn't expect is. him to be yeah. that big. I think he's one for the future. Personally. Well, he he may well be, but uh, yeah, I mean, obviously, this is important because, of course, Enzo's booked. Uh, he, he can't play on Sunday, can he? Against Leicester, I do believe he's unavailable because of he's his cup tied. Yeah, well, I know Cassidy's cup tied, but. Chuck's back, so I suspect he'll play instead of uh, Enzo. So good to see him fit again. Um, but yeah, no, I did. I did like. I did like the look of Cassidy actually, because I mean, the only time I, I saw him, it was I can't even remember what game now. But he came on and we conceded the goal largely because of him. Uh, you know, I think it might have been Brentford actually. He made no attempt to close the, the yeah. score. Right now, yeah. I remember, yeah. So, uh, but I did, I like what I saw last night. Uh, so, uh, yeah, one for there the future. There is the stinking, the stinking, the, the, there is the secret um, feeling. No, the, the, the I You said stink. I said stinking, yeah, stinking feeling. Freudian oh. slip. Yeah, yeah, very stinky. I'm very stinky. I, I bathed earlier. But Shower. Really, not, not sufficiently. Um, there is the, uh, the possibility that, that uh, some of the, um, the uh, stats gurus might have got a couple of things right with some of these players. But perhaps not for the moment. I mean, perhaps Sunday would be a perfect opportunity to play uh, um, Mudrick in the central midfield role. I think I'd rather we won the game as it's a quarter final of the FA Cup. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. You know, okay. if he, he has got to pick the strongest team he has available. In fact, actually, we should talk about it now. Um, Why? You know, well, because it's a good segue. Um, because you know, I mean, look, we're 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 eleventh, okay. Um, so we didn't exactly move very far by beating Newcastle United last night. We're a point nearer to them. We're a point nearer. Well, we are a point nearer to them. Exactly. They're they're tenth with forty. We're eleventh with thirty nine. Uh, we've got a we've got a game in hand. 
So we played 27 and they played 28. In fact, we've got a game in hand on everybody above us up to sixth. And West Ham United are in seventh and they're on 43 points. So we're only four points behind West Ham. So, you know, it, I know we the number of times we said this this season and then had it rammed down our throats the next week because we lose to somebody we shouldn't do. But, you know, it's we're not out of it in, for seventh place yet. We're not out of it. Uh, we just, again, need to have a bit of flaming consistency. Our next four matches, Burnley at home, you've got to say that's a game we should win. United at home, I mean, we sh- we could win that um, if we turn up. Sheffield United away, we should win that. And Everton home, we should win that. I mean, the, the, all of those games are what you would call winnable games. Maybe United might be the toughest one. But, of course, they're above us, so that would be a good one to win. We're not out of it yet, JK. We're not. And of course, if we progress in the FA Cup, get to the semi-final, get get. Uh, I mean, there's some you know ropey old teams still left in there, some good ones to go out. We could be in the semi-final, and we could get to the final. We could win the FA Cup. We do all of that. This season is not quite the shambles that we were saying it was. We could we get to the final and um, uh, and play very well for ninety minutes, fail to put the game away, and uh, lose it in extra time. We could do that, of course. That would be. We could do that, of course. You know, very, I mean. Just- Chelsea thing to do this season. I know, but what well, it's all very well Chidge saying yeah, there are 10 games and uh, um, they're all winnable, but um, you know, which, win side, which, which side's going to turn up? Well, I you know, know. I, I, I can't look at the graph. I'm all right, you could say that we have had progress in that we've we've got a bit better points tally than we had last year already, I think, and we've got um, and and we we've uh, um, we've played decently against City, we've played um, decently against other sides but amidst the the horror you know it's once again it's it's will they just succumb to an easy an easy team that we should be putting away you know is it is that going to be what what we're we're looking forward to you cannot tell at the moment i'd love to say be nice to see a you know the graph going up saying yeah we're getting better each week yeah it's fantastic yeah well we've we've now got we've now got as many points as we had last season with 10 games to go yeah that's better just, Unless we I, lose every game, which I don't which see, I, as though. Which, I, which I just said. But um, oh, did you? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You I was were, reading you, the comments. I was reading the comments. Yeah, on you YouTube. were clearly listening to me. Like, <laughs> I think you, you just let it. You know, you, you. you <laughs> oh, you, yeah, yeah, yeah. In case turn, I'll, I'll nod a bit and look at other. No, stuff. I was reading the comments. Caroline said something really interesting because Caroline always does say something interesting. She said we're three points closer to them. Everyone above us up to seventh, has to play at least two of the top three. I didn't realise that. We only have Arsenal. We've got a good chance to make seventh if we don't screw up a game with the team below something. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I see. What you're so, sorry, I, I got just distracted, and I do apologise, JK. I will do better. Um, okay, listen, Clayton, what, what, would, what would be an acceptable season then? Um... Given that we could, make, you know, it's possible that we could finish seventh and get get a European spot, and it's possible that we could get an FA Cup, uh, win the FA Cup. Well, I mean, at least get to the final, or you know, blah blah blah. You know what I mean? Given where we were, given the absolute shambles that we've had for the last two years, do you know what an acceptable season would be? Is if we finish the season with a settled side that you could just basically say, okay, we've got seven guys there who are starters next season who you'll be happy to have playing, and we supplement that with another couple of players. That so, would be, that would be an acceptable season. I can't see us getting a European spot because we're too inconsistent. We just, you know, we should beat Burnley at home. Well, how many times have we said that? Even when we were brilliant, <laughs> we, we, we would pull out a, a loss at home to Burnley. Yeah, but that's when they had Sean Dyche. But don't worry, he's coming with Everton a few weeks later. Yeah. So and Exactly. And, and, you know, Everton will shithouse their way to a point. Listen, I, I think that um, I, I, I can't look at this season. I mean, yeah, of course, if we get Europe and if we, if we sort of win the cup but Liverpool and Man City are still in the cup I watched those two teams on Sunday and just thought how far away we are from them in there although although we drew with both although we drew with both but but do we play play like that every week no No. we don't and that that's the whole consistency point 
you know, th this is a very, very Chelsea thing. For those of a certain age, this is what it was always like. We basically, I mean, I, I thought one of the, the greatest sort of examples of that, and this isn't actually that long ago, well, I suppose it is, everything's long ago now, is, you know, we basically, um, we went to the San Siro, where Dennis Wise scored a fucking great goal. And then on the Saturday, we played against, um, we were away at Watford, bottom of the Premier League at that time, and lost. And it was one of Watford's only like two or three victories the whole season. That's Chelsea. That's what we used to do consistently until a certain gentleman came in, mm. uh, you know, and, and made us what what we became. But before that, that's exactly what we do. You know, we, we basically always turn up for the big games and then stuff up. So, yeah, I mean, it'd be brilliant. It'd be brilliant to win a cup. It would be great to um, to get into Europe. I mean, there are signs of progress. You look at sort of small victories. I look at, you know, Caicedo, Fernandes. I thought they both played well last night. You know, Connor ran his nuts off, even though he was he wasn't well. Um, as you said, you mentioned the keeper, Gusto. You know, Jackson's showing signs of improvement. Hey, Clayton, who who would be? You know, you said we need a, a settled side. Yeah. For next season. So who who would that side be at the moment? Well, uh, so so that's seven that I'm looking at. So you basically got um Petrovic. You got Petrovic. I'm sort of thinking Desazi, although I'm not 100 percent sold on him. I, I think perhaps with another person next to him. I'm not completely wedded to him. Uh I think left back, we probably need somebody. Uh because What's the point at Chilwell? Great player on his day. I don't know how, you know, he never stays fit. Um, the poodle's okay, but he's, I'd be happy to see him go. So you've got the midfield. The midfield three I really like. So that's what have you. Um, Enzo Moises and Gallagher, right? Yeah. And then up front, it's hard up front. I, I, I think Jackson is a good backup. I don't think he should be our main striker. Um, I think, you know, if Nkuku's ever fit, you've got him as well. So you've got that six or seven. And then you've got these other sort of peripheral players. I've probably missed somebody out. I've probably missed somebody really good out. Have I missed anybody out? Who else Midweke. is in the okay. moment? Who? Medweke is, is occasional, isn't he? He's not really. Do me a favour. <laughs> no, I mean, so yes. Yeah, so I'd say that we've got about 70, 70, 60 to 70 percent of a, a team that we can add to and can grow. I mean, we're still miles off, but I think that, you know, it's a decent start. Yeah, it's not. It's a very you make some good points there. I mean, JK, I, I, I the, the the question I wonder about at the moment is, uh, will will these returning players help? I mean, we've still got a, an injury list like emergency ward ten, but you know, James Lavia, Nkunku, uh, Chuck Wameka that we're talking about. You know, will these players actually you know make a difference? Will it help? We can't tell, can we? Really, unless he, he no. towards the end of the season he gives them a um, a run out when it doesn't mean anything. Um, um, I mean, in which case you don't know whether whether the club will say no, but they have to play because we want to get one more place up the league. I mean, yeah, if if your theory is right that we can finish uh, seventh, uh, every game is going to be uh, a must win. Um, so he's not going to be able to give people an opportunity to express themselves just because they haven't played. I don't think we're going to see Lavia. I don't think we're going to see. Um, um, uh, what's his face? Um, it's Benoit. There's Badia Sheila, isn't there? We haven't. Is it, will uh, Will he return? Will he get a place back? He didn't. Hasn't impressed when he has played. They've got lots got of players Fafana as well. Got Fafana, yeah, but Fafana hasn't played all season, has he? Which you know what's what, and they've got also the Fafana on loan at Burnley has been looking quite decent actually, but still, still not not an answer, not a a class centre forward who 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 
takes the game by the scruff of the neck and scores something out of nothing, which is what you want really from a forward, or or puts the ball away once you've, you know, like in the way that Palmer scored yesterday. Really excellent shot, which the oh, goal Yeah, we forgot about him. Yeah, <laughs> I knew there was somebody I was missing. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he's the and first one. Screaming, going, Pala, Pala. <laughs> but no, but to go back to that goal, the very fact that he, it, it was such a good goal because he took it so quickly and hit it so hard. And we, we haven't been seeing that hugely with the team this year. And he shot. doesn't mind having a go either, which is also no, good it, to it, see. Yeah, which, which is fantastic as well. But yeah, so, um, no, but I think we're, we're struck by the same problem all the way through, aren't we? Which is you, you then get a player who's been injured, you know, and you, you, you bring him back in. Do you bring him back in slowly? Do you give him a go? In each instance, like Nkunku, he's, he's been been not settled into the side and has got injured again. Yeah, so I'm not, uh, I'm not convinced about him. I've got to be yeah, honest. Well, I know, but once again, he played he played well. Uh, and I keep going, oh, we should oh, never man. pay attention to pre-season. I know, but bloody hell, it was so different. It was, it was utter chalk and cheese between what we've been so, seeing. In the season, anybody yeah. who, who basically knows anything about football has said that Nkuku is a fantastic player. All right, yeah, yeah. you know, I, I'm sort of that um, Julian Laurent who knows a little bit more about French football than I do has said he's fantastic, and I think he is fantastic. And I think it's it's really unfortunate, you know, you join a new league, a new team. And you get injured, and you can't settle. You're playing. Maybe, maybe the worry is that he'll never be the same again. Maybe I mean we don't know the extent of that injury, but if it was a knee injury and it kept him out that long, it doesn't sound too great. No, maybe, I mean a bit like Chilwell. I mean I love Chilwell, but I we, we all do. We all do. Yeah, but what, I'm beginning to wonder if he's done for. That he's not really ever going to be the same player after that injury. This yeah. does happen. Yeah. So maybe that's what we've got with Nkunku, which would be very very sad. But it yeah. does happen. I mean, look, saying what we've just said there, you know, accepting that we've had a lot of injuries, returning players may or may not help. We've got maybe seven or eight, seven players that, that might be good enough to take it to next season. Obviously, I agree with you, Clayton, that, that the club, I mean, you know, what, what this side is desperately crying out for is some leadership and some experience. If they're not prepared to go back on their, we're only signing players under 25, then... It's just not going to get better, I don't think. Not quickly, anyway. But that aside, do you think that, uh, you know, finishing maybe seventh, certainly getting to the cup final, is that enough to keep uh, Poch in his job? I think so. I mean, I, I, I have to say I've been quite underwhelmed by him thus far, but I think he's, I don't think, any of these people in the squad are his. I don't think he's, you know, we didn't buy anybody in January. I don't think that he's got any players that he wants in that squad. Um, I find some of the stuff that he's done baffling. I find his strange reluctance to bond with the fans weird. Um, I listened to what you said on... Was it last? Was it Friday or last well, Monday? Had a bit of a rant. Yeah, um, I find that I find that particularly weird. Although it, it does make me laugh because I thought well, if he's a Tottenham fan, which he probably is, <laughs> that's probably why he doesn't like our fans. What? Well, <laughs> listen, I, I I am joshing. I mean, I do think he's. I think he's missing a trick. I think the club would have a little bit more difficulty in perhaps letting him go if that's what they wanted to do, if he'd built up a rapport with the fans. Uh, obviously, that didn't uh, save Tommy Tuchel. And by the way, just apropos of nothing, fantastic statistic today, wasn't it? Did you see that um, the, the fat Spanish waiter got sacked? Oh, and, yeah, yeah. They're in and, 17th. And, and Sarri resigned from, from Lazio, which means that every single manager that we've had since Ancelotti is now out of work. Been uh, fired. Apart, well, just yeah. Apart from Tuchel, who will be out of work um, at the end of the season. season. Uh, but no, listen, I, I think, I do think that there we've got a decent squad of players, but I think he's working under really difficult conditions. I listen. I, I, th- I think the bottom line is, if he left in the summer, 
I wouldn't, I wouldn't care. If he stays in the summer, I'm not that bothered. If he stays, I hope he gets people that he wants in. And let, let's see where we are, say, Christmas of next year. Yeah. Can I can ask a question. If, what, what do you, using the Liverpool Man City game as a kind of template for excel, excellence, yeah. what's so apparent with both sides is that the, the, the very basic things that Tommy Tuchel used to do when he first came to the club and how we won the Champions League was the press. Um, yeah. well, was particularly pushing people um, out, out towards the left-hand side where they couldn't be creative. And Klopp does that enormously. That's one of one of Klopp's main things. Um, uh, and and City do it, but they do it in a. It's the same business of of getting the getting four players around another player as soon as possible, and then getting the ball back within a certain time frame, which was what was what Barcelona were doing, what and what um, Pep was doing at, at Barcelona, even when he was a player. So uh, um, if those are the given, that's the kind of template for for excellence. Um, why do we not resemble? either side is it that we don't have the players to do it but even the most basic thing of the press this it drives me to distraction this strange thing of of one player running at the goalkeeper and the others all hanging back is it that he thinks they're too knackered because they do a little bit of a press from the halfway line going forwards they they seem to um uh, you think, oh, there's a bit of pressing going on, but it's not the kind of press that we're subjected to when we play nearly every team. Because Newcastle, the very beginning of the game last night, pressed madly, particularly Livramento, who's, a, who's who I thought, you know, is it, it was a little bit running around a bit like that like early Connor in the season, just with not a great deal of creativity, but uh, attacking winger stuff, always getting getting into into your face. Gordon was the same, and we didn't do very well at the beginning. Other than bizarrely, the goal, which came from a rather subtle piece of um, uh, of, of playing out from the back, I was taken aback. I thought we're going to lose this, and actually, it was a lovely pass. And then um, Palmer then played it to uh, to Gusto, who played it down to the wing, and it was it was that that was a uh, an excellent moment. I was I'm taken aback by our, our our brilliance suddenly with that. But but the most of the time we were under under this press. So if every other team is doing it, why does Poch avoid it with us? I just I, get very, very confused with this. I, do, I don't actually understand. I really don't understand because if you look at any other Poch team, especially, especially Spurs, they press. Southampton, they press like mad. And that that's, you're 100% right. I said exactly the same thing last night. I said, look at what Newcastle are doing to us. Why aren't we doing it to them? Yeah. I, don't, I really don't know. I mean, you've, you've got Connor who will run backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards and press. Um, I heard today somebody said that Jackson did a lot of pressing. Well, he, well, he doesn't, and he does a little bit. Well, our three up front, and Palmer doesn't do it. If we've got a criticism of him, we don't. If we we might run from side to side to stop people coming forward, but your example in Newcastle, they were on us. They were absolutely honest. We couldn't. That's why we had to hit the ball up long. And that was, and, and we don't do that. And I don't know why we don't do that. But uh, I mean, the ironic thing is, we've got a young team. A young team should be out of press like Matt. I mean, it's only. It's always. I was getting the impression they do it for a certain amount of time. I thought Newcastle. They then. They then relented. They then came back and they stopped doing it. They slowed down essentially from doing it because they were right in our faces for the first 10 minutes. And whether that's the point is it's so knackering that you just can't maintain yeah, it. You, you, you just mentioned the Liverpool Man City game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That went. That was 90 minutes of pressing or 100 minutes well, of pressing. It was, it was absolutely, yeah. I, I, I don't understand it either. I mean, it, it's more evidence of inconsistency, isn't it? And I think there's nothing worse, as we've seen in the past, about a half-hearted press. I mean, in the days when we had Mason Mount playing, Mount was the lead presser. And, you know, he would press and then others wouldn't. I mean, if, if you're going to play the pressing game, they've all got to do it. It's got to be synchronised. It's got to be intelligent, you know, and that's what you see the really good teams do. City, of course, Barcelona in days gone by, Liverpool. And, he, and you know, if you're seeing even teams like Newcastle doing it, but it's got to be everybody does it. Otherwise, it doesn't work, yeah. you know, because the teams that you're playing against are good enough if, to, to, to exploit the gap that's created by somebody not doing their job and pressing. 
So anyway, so many questions, so few answers. This is the Chelsea fan cast. This is what we do. Can <laughs> <laughs> like, I segue you into t-shirts? That should be a slogan. Uh, we came up with another slogan the other night in the pub. Buggered if I can remember what it was, but it was quite funny at the time. But uh, yeah, they, we, 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 we showed them in the, well, we showed the designs in the pub and they went down quite well. But yes, we have, we have t-shirts that are, that are imminent uh, people out there. A uh, couple that are quite uh, incendiary uh, in terms of their content. Uh, and there are two that are very much Chelsea fan car centric. So the entire team with wonderful designs by Richard Schaller of us lot as a team. And uh, there's one of me and JK, which is, uh, well, it's e esoteric. Let's put it that way. Uh, and there's one of one with Connor Gallagher and, and one uh, digging out Clear Lake. So there we go. Watch this space. We'll let you know when they're available. Chidge, aren't they called Blue Co now? Aren't we supposed to call them that? Only if you're a wanker. Okay, we won't call them All right. that then. Well, no, okay. given, given the shambolic nature and the ineptitude of it. Right? It's clear, like, I keep saying this time and time and time again. It's pointless pointing the finger at Eurosec. It's pointless pointing the finger at Egbali. It's pointless pointing the finger at Bowley. I was saying to somebody in the pub uh, last night that we are obsessed with being able to finger, no uh, naughtiness intended there, with a person, an identity. And it's because... We've always had this. It's like, you know, Roman Abramovich for 20 years, uh, Bates before that. When this is, those days are gone. The finger needs to be pointed at an organization, and that organization is Clear Lake. When the shit hits the fan, if this club goes tits up, it's Clear Lake who are at fault, not an individual. It's a Can collection of them. Briefly about what this meeting was about that they had. This what board, meeting? Big, big board meeting. They had a big board. Yeah, they had a board meeting. Yeah, it was just a board meeting, was it? Yeah, was so, they, you know. I was told that there were Swiss investors there. I have no idea. You you, you know people who uh, are richer than us, so you would probably know because uh, who knows, mate? I have no idea. I know they had a board meeting. That's all I know, you know. Well, what normally happens is it's a it's a, um, a, a steward of some kind um, that spoke to Gary, who then, you know, Chinese whispers, who yeah. then said, well, there, there was a board meeting and the, the Swiss investors were there. I didn't know there were any Swiss investors. But yeah, one, well, one, of, one, one of the, the main guys is Swiss. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's, He's that's the one that's about 80, 80 yeah. years old. Yeah, yeah. Oh, he, but he, but anyway, he back there, so they'll have been making a few decisions, won't they? Um, they me. will. And no doubt we will find out the ramifications of them pretty darn soon. Uh, that's for sure. Anyway, uh, Sadly, that's about uh, all we've got time for tonight. Uh, a bit of a short show for us, uh, but, you know, just the Newcastle game. What do you expect? Uh, now, we will be back. Uh, the fancast will be back with me, JK, and Alex Churchill on Friday. Ooh. Yes, Friday night. Uh, to look ahead to the FA Cup quarterfinal against Leicester City. We'll have a Leicester opposition view fan as well, so that will be exciting. Uh, you can follow this show on all the social media at Chelsea Fancast, me at Stanford Chidge, and Jonathan and Jonathan Kidd and Clayton at goalie fifty nine. Uh, Clayton, lovely. To, it was lovely to see you. Uh, you know, yesterday, obviously. Uh, of course. I, we said I said I haven't seen you properly for a long time, ever. So it was really nice to see you and have a little bit of a catch up. Yeah, lovely to see good. you tonight. Yes, enjoyed it. Very good. Good stuff. Good stuff. And Mister Kidd, uh, yep. having uh, you, you know, you, you over there in the corner, you Hello, boy. Pot oi, oi. oi, oi. <laughs> it's good to see you, mental bastard. I love you. Uh, yeah, I'm so glad Tony got to uh, enjoy your company last night. He was really excited about it before he left. It looked, sounds like he had a great time. He was great. He was great, as, you, as you'd expect. Fantastic. Yeah. Uh, talking of Tony, he's now doing his uh, observations from Grocer Jack, and he's putting them on our website. I, I, he says he's done it already, but I haven't had a look yet. But uh, uh, and talking of which, I put all of my CFC UK articles on the website now uh, under the view from Stamford Chidge. So uh, if you're interested in a few of the, you know, I, I, there's about a two month lag. So, you know, I wouldn't piss DJ off too much. But if you're interested and you can't get it, then have a look there. So, right, we better go because uh, uh, it's getting late. But uh, thank you for listening, everybody. See you next week. Until then, keep it blue, keep it carefree and keep it chels. Yeah, I'm oh, the chels. Chels. Oh, you guys. Ah.